Hello, this is Robe Hartnett with Access Television. Today I have with me a very special guest, Mr. Vikram Vij. Pleasure, namaste. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. I want to start with the time that I actually uh, first met you and was introduced to you. I had seen you a couple of times on the television show, but you know on television show you don't really get the heart of who a person is. I think when I saw you that evening when you were uh, receiving the award, Correct. I was especially touched mm -hmm. because I have a special relationship with my family, especially my dad. And you talked about that. Well, first of all, let's talk about the award, why you achieved it, or they honored you with it. <laughs> and then secondly, about that relationship, because, you know, we don't hear a lot of, with moms are always the crown and glory, but we don't right. hear a lot about that. First of all, I'm honored to be, uh, you know, asked to come and join you in a conversation and share a little bit of my journey and what we did and what we started. Um, the Drishti Magazine Awards were given to me by uh, an organization that, that focuses uh, long term on people who have thought long, who have persevered hard, who have worked extremely hard in getting what they wanted to do. And so, um, you know, I, I felt that at that time, that there was a moment that while I was on stage, I actually hadn't planned anything in my head. It just, it just came to me. I just managed to be able to just talk about it. And, and I actually, to be honest with you, I, was, I did not know that I was actually giving a speech. I was in such a Zen mode. I, I'd actually transferred my, transformed myself um, into, um, into a place where as a, I was a young child growing up in India and, and eating delicious Indian food and cooked by my you know, grandmother and my grandfather. And I'd actually forgotten where I was. I didn't realize that I was actually wow. giving a speech. Wow. Um, and I didn't realize that I was crying or I had tears in my eyes right. about it. Uh, it's only later on that people said, uh, did you know this is what happened? So it, it was a journey. It, it still is a journey. Right. And it, the journey was to bring awareness to a great country, yes. uh, a great cuisine that is, uh, has the depth of, you know, uh, great spices, uh, right. traditions, right. and most importantly, it has beautiful aromas and flavors. I oh, mean, you're in my kitchen and you can smell delicious food, you know, hand roasted well. by the women. <laughs> <laughs> At this moment, while we're talking, they are obviously setting up for the evening, is that yeah. correct? Well, evening, they've been here since 5.30. Wow. They have roasted all the spices, ground all the spices. You know, they are my backbone. My Indian women are my backbone. Without wow. them, I would be nobody. Wow, very good, very good. Well, you know, there's always some foundation, right? That upholds the structure of this great person. Is that correct? And the foundation is based on trust, love, and on the fact that they are family. Right. They are not workers for me. They are right. not employees of mine. Yes. That's a, that's a very uh, English way to say, you know, yes. these are your employees. Right. No, they're family. Right. There is a sister, there's an aunt, there's a friend, there's a co-worker that's working in the kitchen, making sure that the food tastes delicious, that it is well presented, and it's, it, it brings up the aromas, and your palate should be salivating wow. by the time you mouth the food. So, so let's talk important. about Very important. So let's talk about, you've been in Canada how long? I came to Canada in 1990 mm -hmm. and I opened up my first restaurant on West Broadway in 1994. Mm -hmm. And at that time the goal was just to open up a restaurant where you could go and take some friends out and be proud of the culture. It, it felt that we Indians didn't take our time to educate our public. You know, we created the butter chicken and the buffet restaurants and it was right. just almost like we didn't, we didn't elevate the cuisine, we just kind of elevated, you know, we became doctors and lawyers and engineers, but we never took the cuisine. And the cuisine is so deep-rooted in beautiful Ayurveda and the science of eating yeah. healthy through your spices. And um, I wanted to showcase that. Excellent. So at that time, it was not a monetary goal. It was more to bring awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, and it became a bigger goal and became a bigger goal and you know sometimes I tell people um, focus is the most important part uh, yes. in your life and 
uh, you know, having the drishti or, or having that focus, which which we say, uh, to not veer off for money or fame or anything else, but just remaining focused at that target uh, is the goal uh, that I had and I still have. I'm not right. going to change it right. uh, right. now. Um, so it, it really fascinates me how how long we have come and how tough we have to work in order to change the perception of right. Indian food. Right. Because I'm still considered an ethnic cuisine ah. and, and I wanted to change the perception. So it was not a restaurant that I opened, it was a love and the passion that I opened. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit. I know you just opened up a new place mm -hmm. several months ago. Is that correct? Right. Uh, so where you're sitting? Yes. So where you're sitting right now is a place called My Shanti yes. by Vikram Bridge, okay. which means amongst the chaos of India and the craziness of India, I find peace. Mm -hmm. So the menu of My Shanti is regional. It's based on my travels to India. I go to India every year, mm -hmm. and I go. And experience food in different places and that's the menu here. Whereas the new restaurant that we just opened up is on Camby Street. It's called Bridges on Camby. Yeah. Uh, and it's on level on, on 3128 Camby Street. Okay. And the idea of that food is more modern food. Uh -huh. And then there is the then there is Bridges Rangoli, which is next to old Bridges on Grand Street. Oh, okay. And the best way to figure this out is just go on the website called yes. bridges.ca and yes. it'll give you that whole little ladder of where we are and look at it from there rather than sure. uh, just trying to remember all these things. Sure. These are things in your, that are embedded in your head because you, know, you're, you, you're, you breathe them every day. Right. But if somebody is not from here, if, if you're watching this, just go on bridges.ca and you'll get the whole answer on all whichever restaurants we have and what we do. Excellent. What would you say? to the youth of today who, you know, they've seen you as a successful individual and oftentimes the way the world works in the, a lot of television shows, they think success, success, money, money, cars, cars. What would you look and say to the youth that, that gets them beyond that because they look up to you. When they see you in these environments, they need to know what you We talked about it earlier, but speak on that behalf to them. I think if I was to talk to you directly, my approach would be is that there is really, really, really no substitute for hard work. That's the only thing I would suggest to you. Pay your dues. If you look at it, Gandhi mm -hmm. saved India and got freedom from the British by having patience and working hard. He worked hard. He was wearing a loincloth and he changed the face of a nation. This has been Robe Hartnett with Robe and Friends. This is a perfect example of Robe and Friends. Namaste. How do you say it again? Namaste. Namaste. Which means my energy goes to you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Again, I didn't laugh. <laughs>